Okay. All right. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, I'm Tim Tagajewski. I'm a painter from Cleveland, Ohio. And welcome to the little corner of my studio. Um, as you can see, I've uh, made some substantial progress on this painting. Um, I tend to work at a, a fairly slow pace. So I wanted to make sure I was far enough along so you got a good idea of what uh, the painting would, would be. Um, so I'm gonna try to do some um, minor details uh, and we'll go from there. Hopefully it won't be too boring for you all, but um, stick around and um, ask me anything, uh, any questions you have or uh, comments and We'll see how this goes. All right, thanks. So some, like for those that aren't familiar with my work or at least this current body of paintings, um, I've been inspired by retro video games and the series sort of started um, a few years ago when I was like enjoying playing playing a lot of the games that I um, played as a kid growing up, and um, on some level I kind of felt like a little guilty for for the amount of time I was uh, spending playing the games when I really probably should have been working in the studio. And um, so I was trying to figure out a way to like incorporate uh, video game references uh, in my work as a way to like kind of justify <laughs> like the amount of time I was spending playing games. Um, and, uh, but one, one of the things that I really like I found out I noticed when I was playing the games was that a lot of the memories I had of certain games were um, kind of very, they were different than uh, than how I remembered uh, remembered them as a kid and so it got me thinking about the way we tend to have skewed memories of our past and uh, that sort of prompted this, this series of work where I was thinking about like the, the visual elements that I remember and how they were different um, as an adult um, or even like just the general gameplay um, or different levels and sort of wanted to use that as a catalyst to explore this. Um, these ideas of um, memory or the way that we have like kind of fractured memories. Um, and so I started to uh, take screenshots while I was playing the games and and importing some of those um, screenshots into Photoshop and cutting out, cutting and pasting different elements um, different like visual assets from games. So like, you know, a, you know, a, a series of flowers or uh, a cloud formation and kind of creating like a, a digital collage, so to speak, of uh, visual elements from different games uh, to kind of create a, a new landscape environment um, that was I was hoping would be like still sort of familiar, but off. And um, so that's kind of like what I've been working on and, and exploring is uh, ways that like, you know, we kind of find something familiar, but it's off a little bit. Um, and that sort of segued into, you know, kind of heavily manipulating some of the, the imagery in Photoshop. And once, once I get a point in, in the editing 
where I'm like, all right, this is workable. I'll project it onto the painting surface and trace it out. And then from there, it's like, I kind of allow for additional editing, um, changes to like color, uh, placement, uh, scale, and uh, so like the, the end painting ends up being somewhat different than, than the digital sketch. Um, but I'm having fun with it. And so the paint, yeah, the paintings are really more for, for me. I'm enjoying the whole process of playing the video games for one, but, but then also um, sort of this new process. It was the first time like I kind of uh, used Photoshop in that way as like a, a, a tool to sketch out um, a composition for the paintings. Um, and it's been working out pretty well. Um, So right now, um, the reason why like I, I tend to work slowly is sort of the, the nature of the material. Um, I, I use a combination of uh, tubed uh, acrylic paint and latex house paint. Um, you know, I, I, I'll get I'll go to like the hardware store and find um, mist tint tinted colors or um, or or used used paint and and sort of use that as as the basis to mix um, more specific colors and what I've found is that it usually takes like multiple layers to kind of get like a really opaque. Um, coverage of the paint. So, uh, so I'll, I'll usually do, you know, like I'll trace out the, um, the composition, I'll put like a wash on, uh, and then like start kind of playing around with, with the uh, different colors, um, color choices. I'll make changes as I go, but once I, I settle on a color, like the, the first coat is really thin. Um, and so like, I'll, it'll, it'll take a couple coats to kind of get it more opaque. Um, so that's what I'm doing now right here with these flower petals is I, I was able to get one coat, coat on, but you can still kind of see like the pencil lines through some kind of doing another coat to eliminate that. Um, and then Later on, I'll be adding some shading uh, to the stems and the grass area, kind of make that pop a little more. Hey, Tim, I just want to let you know that Michael says hi. Oh, hey. How you doing? Thanks for joining, tuning in. I'll have to channel my inner Bob Ross and hopefully not make it too boring for you. You're doing great so far. <laughs> Thanks. 
I'm really not used to having like any sort of communication or contact when I'm working in the studio. So this is this is uh, new for me. Well, I wouldn't have guessed. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about some of um, the ways that you come up with ideas for your artwork? Yeah, I mean, the, the process is, is usually like, you know, when I'm playing the games, I'll like kind of pause at a certain um, stage where there's something that sort of jumps out at me, um, like on the screen, whether it's like an interesting, uh, uh, series of trees or a uh, mountain range or something that's uh, in the background. And so I, I have like a, a, a database <laughs> in, on my computer of, of all these like, you know, different assets, visual assets from games that I can like kind of pull from. And so when I'm kind of starting the a, a new composition, I'll like kind of go through that list of um, assets and, and then kind of pick ones and, and play around with um, the different layering. And again, like I'll play around with the, the scale, um, the, the color scheme. Um, I'll, I'll do a lot of manipulation in Photoshop and you know, un until I get to a certain stage where I'm like, all right, this is workable. I, I feel good about this composition. Um, let's take it to the next stage. And then I'll basically project that, um, that Photoshop image onto the, the canvas. Um, or in, I usually tend to work on wood, wood panels. So it's not canvas, but um, the painting surface. And then from there, um, I kind of allow allow myself to to make changes. Like I don't really adhere to um, the the uh, initial composition, um, and the colors change a lot too. Like uh, obviously, co colors um, like digital colors that you find in Photoshop, you know, are kind of hard or difficult to, to replicate and paint um, as far as like saturation. Um, and so, so I, I work with what I have and um, kind of trying to make the most of it. Um, So a lot of the um, latex paint I'll just store in these used, you know, like pasta <laughs> sauce jars um, or salsa jars. Um, I'll use, like if I find mist tints um, at the store, I'll combine them with other colors that I have and to kind of create more specific colors. Um, so these, these ones here are all like kind of pre-mixed, um, from what I had, uh, and then there's times where I'll, uh, get like sample jars, um, that's a lot cheaper than getting like a quart, um, and, I don't know, it's just more cost effective for me um, and get a lot of paint uh, for for the cost. I love the jars because you can see what color you have really easily. Yeah, I have a whole like uh, shelving unit full of stacks of jars, try to keep them in order. And then I use, I tend to use the lids as like, you know, mini pallets, <laughs> but Tim, what artists do you um, 
admire or are follow geez a lot that's why i loved like instagram it was like my my whole feed is artist like contemporary artists um but i've been i've been looking a lot at um like david hockney uh landscapes and uh wayne tebow landscapes um most recently um i'm really getting into them uh but i don't know if there there's like artists that that I admire that kind of, that have that type of influence on the work that I make. I just enjoy the work that they do. Um, but I would say like one of my favorites is definitely Wayne Tebow. Uh, just the way he uses color is phenomenal. Um, love his landscapes. But he's both, most known for like his his candy and and cake cakes, but definitely enjoy his landscapes. Jennifer tells us that tomorrow is his 100th birthday. Thank you. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Amazing. And he's probably still painting. You're getting a lot of happy um, concurrence here. Oh, nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we love Wayne Tebo. <laughs> so you have some more shout outs. Mom okay. and dad and your favorite aunt Anne Marie all <laughs> also say hello. Hi guys. <laughs> and uh, Michael would like to know what game inspired the piece you're working on. Oh, that's that's a good question. Um, let's see, the flowers are actually they're loosely from uh, what stage? I forget the stage of Kirby's Adventure for the NES. Um, one of the later stages. Um, but the, like I was kind of the, trying to explain um, earlier was that uh, some of the elements kind of uh, get far removed from their original source. Um, so, and I think that's like during the, the editing process um, in Photoshop. And then once I get it onto the painting surface, um, I'll adjust, you know, I, I just kind of like let myself have the freedom to make changes. So they don't necessarily adhere to um, the aesthetics of the video game. So, but the, so like the mountain range was kind of loosely from Kirby's Adventure as well. Um, but I've, I've manipulated it and changed it substantially so i don't know if anyone would really notice that but but the flowers themselves are kind of the the, the elements that are like kind of closely um familiar i would think if if someone is familiar with that game they might recognize the flowers Thanks, Tim. Want to let you know that Pam also says hello. Hi, Pam. Thanks for tuning in. I didn't think anyone would really stop in and say hi, so I appreciate it.
So recently I started using these um, plastic uh, trays to mix paint. The, the lids were, were getting a little too, too full and crusty, but um, so I don't know if you can see that in the, the video, but I'm, I'm mixing paint, looking down mixing paint. Hey, Tim, what do you think the artist's role in society is? Oh, geez. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. We'll just throw you uh, a philosophical moment here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, it's a tough question because, it, I mean, it, I believe it's really up to the artist. I mean, there's, there's artists that are really into, like, social political issues. Um, and and make work that um, addresses some of their their concerns, um, and but then there's also artists that uh, are just um, maybe more uh, like ab abstract painters um, that are really interested in um, like some of the formal qualities of of painting and and what that means and. So like, I think it's up to whatever the artist is interested in. Um, and, you know, some artists may not uh, 
want to like be more concerned with things outside of their studio, um, so to speak. But um, it's an interesting question. Like uh, you know, there's room for for all of it, um, in my opinion. Thanks. Michael says Michelle's going deep. <laughs> Your fan club has some more feedback for you. Um, Nicole says hello from Las Vegas. And Pam hello. says she's taking a leaf raking break. That's what I need to do too is rake some leaves. Yeah, it's that time of year. Yeah. And um, Nicole also says the mountains remind her of the mountain range that surrounds surrounds us here. Oh, here. nice. And uh, Beth would like to know how many hours goes into creating a painting the size of the one you're working on now. Uh, well, this one I, I started last Sunday. And so, if you include like the the research part, like playing the games and and like the digital editing, um, that's probably like a few hours. And then the actual painting time, I would say maybe six hours or so, six to eight hours um, to kind of get to this point. Um, so it really depends on how complex the, the, the piece is, um, and obviously the size, but I would say probably average about eight hours, eight to 10 hours total. So when I start a, a surface, I'll prime it with usually just like the you know latex primer, um, but I usually put like four to five coats, and it kind of gives it a, a, a subtle texture, like a tooth to the surface. Um, not as aggressive as like a canvas, but um, but there's still some texture to it, and. I like it because I can use like a dry brush uh, technique um, and like sort of what I did, I don't know, here I'll <laughs> bring it forward, but um, like some of the texture that I can create down in some of these surfaces or in the grass that I'm doing um, is using just like a dry brush technique um, where kind of load the the brush up with some paint and you know scrub most of it off off and then just kind of like scrub on the paint and it kind of leaves a, a surface texture that in my mind kind of resembles like a pixelated um, image. Um, so like the work is inspired by retro like pixelated video games, but I don't really use um, that that pixel as aesthetic. Uh, but I kind of get give a, like a hint of that through this te technique, or at least in, in my opinion.
And again, a lot of like the, the process is, um, is doing layers and like layering paint, um, partly because the, the paint kind of goes down a little thin, but, um, but I usually start with uh, light, like I'll do a wash, like a, a orange or some contrast color, and then uh, we'll apply lighter colors and then progressively get darker and darker. Um, so that's what I'm like doing here is started with like the underpainting was orange and applied like a light green and now I'm going over with a darker green. Um, so then like that lighter green and some of the orange still kind of bleed through. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about how your artwork has changed over time? Yeah, uh, it's it's changed quite a bit um, over the years. Uh, when I was in grad school back in like 2005 and six, I was I was making uh, like video work uh, that was like, I was making like public interventions that were documented through video and photography and kind of creating like these installations um, that segued into making performance-based videos, believe it or not, um, for a little bit uh, that were kind of slapstick type, uh, kind of goofy videos. Um, but in undergrad, I, I was a painting major at the Cleveland Institute of Art. Um, so that's, so I sort of like after grad school, you know, did that whole thing, kind of came full circle back to painting. And I've been painting for the last uh, maybe 10 years or so. And um, I think just within the last maybe five years or so, um, have been making work um, that's loosely based on video games. Like I've always had like elements of um, video games in, some, but until re like kind of recently within the last few days or years, um, I've really focused on um, using the video games as reference. Uh, but so yeah, quite a quite a big change in my view um, of how the work has has changed over the years. Um, there was even a period where I was making um, I was doing a series of shaped uh, I called them assemblages, but they were like kind of cut out um, wall pieces that were, um, that utilized unscratched lottery tickets. And so each piece was, was designed around the theme of the, the particular um, lottery ticket, uh, kind of using the aesthetics that they used in the graphics. Um, and uh, so I made those for a number of years. Um, 
people really liked those. It, it kind of drove them crazy because they they wanted to scratch off the tickets. Um, but. But I'm enjoying, you know, being in the studio and and just painting. Um, you know, I, I like the aspect of like the the kind of more hands-on has aspect of the the assemblage lottery ticket pieces, where I was like actually cutting out and like kind of constructing, building these pieces. But um, but there's something nice about just being in the studio in front of a, a can canvas or panel and painting. Um, for me, if it, it, it's been very uh, therapeutic um, with everything that's been going on. I can kind of escape into my, my little uh, safe space here and, and kind of zone everything out. Pam says goodbye. She's going back to the leaves, but said it was great to actually see you painting. Thanks for tuning in, Pam. Tim, do you have a piece of art that's your favorite? Uh, that's like your personal favorite piece that you've created. Oh, that I've created. Um, well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. There's like I I enjoy all of them really um that's the one thing like i i kind of feel fortunate about is like i i really just enjoy living with the work that i create um my house is full of paintings that i make and i know there's like probably some artists that are like oh i can't you know i can't stand looking at the piece once it's finished or whatever um but not me i really enjoy it like you know I love the color, um, you know, it, I, I love like the nostalgic aspect of the, the current paintings. Um, so I, I don't know if there's one painting that I'm like, oh, that's, that's the one. Um, but I'm, I'm just happy with the, the current series and, and what I'm, what I've been able to make. Although I will say like the, um, so I don't know if you can see in the background there, like there's a painting hanging up right here. Um, that was produced during a residency at Akron Soul Train earlier this year. And so I made a series of paintings um, for that residency and I would say those were probably those are probably um, I'm really happy with those. I'll just say uh, I don't know if they're they're much different than the work that I was producing before the residency, but um, but for the amount of time that I had and 
Um, I'm pleased with what I was able to, to produce. And I will give a shout out to Akron Soul Train. I think uh, their their open call is ongoing right now. So any artists interested in doing a residency, go check them out. So I'm just gonna give like some highlights to the rocks down here and I got these uh, these acrylic paint markers. Um, they're called Posca pens um, that I've been kind of experimenting with in some of the, the painting. So I might, um, I might use one of these in a little bit. Hey, Tim, this is your 10 minute warning. So if you want to um, let us know where we can find you online or in the world, um, we'd love to hear. Oh, yeah, that, that went uh, pretty fast. Um, but I, I have a website, timothygaski.com. Um, you can find me on Instagram, like all the information is on my website. So um, if anyone's interested in seeing more of my work, check out the website and that can direct you to Instagram page. Um, I also have a Facebook page. Um, but yeah, go to the website, check it out.
this is what what I have so far. I don't know if you can see that well, but I'm gonna try to use one of these pens. I don't know if that does anything, but it gives it a little extra halo or something. But um, I don't know how much time I have left, but um, that's what I got so far. Um, hope everyone checks out the other artists' work and, and definitely play some bids. Um, thanks to Michelle and everyone at Art Therapy Studio. Appreciate being involved in this. Um, had a fun time. Hope you get some bid on my piece. But I know I'll probably still work at it. It's hard to put something, put a piece down and, and call it done, so. No problem. You've got <laughs> about, oh, probably like about three or four minutes left. So okay. um, what a lot of people have done is um, just put the finishing touches on and then send us a photograph when they're all finished and we'll, we'll put that photo up on the auction site. Okay, great. Yep, I can do that. And uh, yeah, for those of you that are watching, um, the live streaming ends at five, but the auctions will be open till midnight. Yes. Oh, Tim, you already have bids on your piece. It's not even finished yet. Wow, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I, I didn't think I would get any bids. Well, I just really want to thank you for taking the time to um, share share your craft with us and be with us on a Saturday afternoon and your support for the studio. Definitely. Happy to be here. Awesome. That's great. Well, we're going to... Um,
we're going to sign off and get ready for our final um, our final artist of the evening. Um, but thank you again. That piece is looking really great. Can't wait to see. Oh, perfect. I'll That's take a, a good picture of it and send it along. Awesome. We look forward to seeing it. All right, cool. All right. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. All right.